So, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Very good. So, hello, everybody, to our Romanian conference on apitherapy, conference with international participation. Uh, we'll have a wonderful day, I can assure you. We have excellent specialists and experts and practitioners from all over the world. We'll uh, 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 give you the chance to see some of the best specialists from Romania. And a few words about Romania. We have in Romania many, many apitherapy doctors which are licensed in apitherapy, phytotherapy, and aromatherapy, and uh, officially licensed by the government, by the Romanian Health Department. And we have organized many, many conferences on apitherapy. Uh, our practitioner started in 1954, for example, one doctor, Dr. Uh, Alexandru Parteniu. Hello, Claudette. Hello, Claudette. <laughs> Claudette Renalis from France. Okay, so uh, we have organized uh, all these conferences. And then since 2007, we have created, uh, reactivated, if you want, uh, the Romanian AP Therapy Society. And uh, uh, since then, we organize many international events and we have a wonderful cooperation with many people from many countries. Uh, if you are interested to know more about the uh, Romanian experience, you can go to our website, which is apitherapia.ro. Uh, let me put here in the chat. So you go to uh, apitherapia.ro. And then you click on the English, English flag. And you'll see there all our congresses from the past. And if it's any topic interesting for you uh, related to apitherapy, like uh, propolis used for uh, microbes or for this and this, you can just send me an email and I can put you in touch with the uh, people or give you the papers, whatever I have. Very good, very good. Okay. Uh, now, uh, uh, to, to come to our topic, apitherapy against COVID. Uh, you know, in apitherapy, uh, we are based on, uh, on the fact that uh, uh, we use the bee products and the bee products are made by the bees and the bees in order to su survive, they need the bee plants. So no bee plants, no trees, which makes nectar and pollen, the bees cannot survive, okay? So it is very important for all of us to help in our countries plantation, making many new trees, like because there are many areas which are destroyed by the agriculture, industrial agriculture. So we must fight and help our bees. So we must put more bee plants they are very, very important because no bee plants, no bees, no bee products, no epitherapy, no treatment of COVID, okay? And I give you my example here in Romania, we have planted in uh, our fields around here over 1000 trees, uh, which are good for the bees. So uh, next year in Slovenia in March, it will start a big, big uh, uh, action uh, from uh, they, they started with the idea to plant 1 million trees, uh, 1 million trees, uh, which are good for the bees. So please join the, this kind of movement. Okay, good. Now I have a PowerPoint on, uh, on uh, the bee plants, medicinal bee plants. So I'll go pretty quickly through it. And then uh, then uh, we can have a discussion, free discussion on the medicinal bee plants. Okay, let me, let me open it. Okay, medicinal bee plants. Yes, okay. And we must focus on those medicinal plants which are good against COVID-19. So I'll present you like general things and then we will go to the specifics. And uh, just think and write down on your paper what medicinal plants you are using uh, against, uh, against the COVID, okay? Good, so let me do this again. 
in my second year. Okay, good, very good. Now let's let make share screen. Recording is working. So share screen. And I'll present you my PowerPoint on the bees. Uh, I'll do it uh, full screen. Okay. Please confirm me if you can see the. Okay, let me check this one. Why is like this? Okay. Can you see the full screen? Uh, please, please make like this. If you see the full screen, <laughs> you see the full screen or just a small part? Uh, I do not have your, your uh, uh, Nina, can you see the full screen? Okay, there, thank you, thank you very much. Okay, so I'll minimize this one here because it's, uh, okay, good. Now, uh, the medicinal bee plants are very, very important for apitherapy because the bees, they get nectar and they get also pollen which are used later by us, but these substances from nectar and from pollen, they have special uh, uh, components, special pharmacological active substances, which are good to treat various diseases. Okay, so let me do this like, okay, one second. Okay, so we should avoid this kind of thing because it's uh, not good for our planet. Okay, this kind of industrial agriculture, uh, I'm sure in about 30, 30, 50 years will be gone. Once we'll have a better understanding on how to protect the mother nature. Uh, this is very, very, very bad for the bees and for our health. So uh, pollution in the cities should stop and will stop once we have the cars, electrical cars, or with other energies. So uh, the planet will recover, but uh, we may not recover in time if we continue to have some, something like this. So Mother Nature can regenerate very, very quickly. If we offer the chance, like you see in this uh, very nice photo, uh, you just need to give uh, of the place and uh, water and sunlight and the trees will recover. They can, uh, uh, the plants can grow even in asphalt like this. And the specialist says that if the human beings, homo sapiens will disappear from earth, maybe in maximum 100 years, all these kind of materials will be gone. Okay, so you see here also, the plants are very resilient, very resistant. We use medicinal bee plants for thousands of years and we use them even in modern times. We use them for uh, protecting our head against the sunlight, against the heat. And the best kind of agriculture is not industrial agriculture. You see these guys are protected on their faces, nose, because this is extremely toxic. But even if they have this protection, they inhale some of these toxins and many of them, they get cancer. So how can we use this, these foods which are poisoned for our health. So we need to go to permaculture, to biodiversity, and to learn as much as possible how to put the plants. And here are some, some principles. We need to put in our garden trees, which are good for our uh, bees, which makes fruits, like here you see. But these trees should uh, bloom, should be in flower, uh, uh, months after months, like uh, kind, uh, some kind of trees they are uh, flowering in March. Uh, next ones are flowering in April, then in May, then in June, and so on and so on, uh, to offer the bees nonstop nectar and, and, uh, and uh, pollen and uh, resins for propolis. So if, you know, if in your area you have a mono plant, uh, then the bees may get some nectar and pollen for let's say one month, but they, then they will be hungry. So it's important to have a diversity of the plants, of the medicinal plants and bee plants. Okay. Now, in the last about 50 years, you know that there are many, many scientific studies on, on this. And uh, uh, there are many laboratories which are working uh, around the clock to, to find 
the best pharmacological components. In each faculty of pharmacy, in each country, the pharmacists, the students in pharmacy, they learn in the third year about pharmacognosy. And uh, this one is a very good department to cooperate with. Uh, like you can speak with these professors from pharmacognosy and uh, try to get them in your team to cooperate because uh, these medicinal plants, most of them are also B plants. So they are very good for apitherapy too. Here you see some examples with Baccaris dracunculifolia, salvia officinalis, which is very good anti-inflammatory, Hypericum perforatum, which is very good against COVID-2 because it helps the immune system. So it's especially very good to prevent disease and to improve the immune system functioning. Okay, so now here are some, uh, some more ideas. Uh, there are laboratories in many countries which are uh, using these B plants, like Pharma Nectar in Brazil, Apofarm, Balofluran in France, hundreds of books on these topics, some literature here on medicinal B plants. And then uh, here, this big uh, question I already told you uh, it's if the medicinal plants are also uh, B plants. And yes, the answer is yes most of the medicinal plants are also B plants. And we made for Romania a classification in uh, uh, alphabetical order. So it's good to have um, two kinds of lists, uh, one, about everything in Latin, and then uh, you have, uh, you put them uh, one after another, and then you, you check if it is uh, belonging this one to both categories, to medicinal plant and to B plants. Okay, so, just quickly to show some, some of these plants which you have in Romania. And you need to do the same thing in your countries, wherever you are, Africa, Australia, North America, or at least in your area. So because these plants are very, very precious, they are very, very important. I, I made also classification in, uh, of them in the uh, form of trees. So like uh, uh, these plants which are good and what are, the, are they giving, the useful parts? buds, resins, essential oils, and so on. And how much honey can you get if you plant one hectare of a fir tree, for example? This is good for the beekeepers to motivate them to plant these trees. But for us in apitherapy, it's important this part because from, from bark, for example, from oak, we get substances which are astringent, which are good against the wounds, against cancer, and so on and so on, and also Quercus, it's a good source of quercetin. And quercetin is one of the main substances used also against COVID because it's antiviral. And uh, okay, so, uh, and you go to shrubs and then uh, other classification fruit trees because the fruit trees are important also in our gardens. And then I put also for hedges, if you want to protect your property, you can put all around your property on the uh, hedges, you put this kind of plants, not just a hedge made by wood or by other things, just a green hedge. Okay, then you have perennial medicinal bee plants, the ones which live long, uh, like plants which live 10 years or 20 years or 25 years, like lavender lives uh, for 25 years. And uh, these are more important in a garden because you do not have so much work to do. But there are also the annual medicinal plants. And these ones uh, you need to plant every year almost, but they are also important. For example, thyme in some cases does not uh, regrow alone. And uh, thyme is very good antibacterial. So it's good against uh, pneumonia in case of uh, uh, COVID pneumonia. Uh, time uh, uh, is a plant, but also is an essential oil. Okay, so you can get a lot of more information from books, workshops, courses, and again, you can contact us for this topic. And then uh, uh, what kind of animal diseases and human diseases can we treat? It's a huge list of diseases which we can treat with uh, bee products and uh, medicinal bee plants, because you have a lot of components there. What are the main characteristics? So in Ayurveda, in traditional Chinese medicine, uh, uh, we use a lot this kind of characteristics of the medicinal plants and of the bee products, 
bitter, sweet, spicy, salty, astringent, and sour. For example, sour is very good for the liver. When a patient with COVID has a problem with the liver, like the liver is fatty or it's somehow in, uh, intoxicated by uh, medicines or any other problem in the, uh, the liver area, it's good to have sour uh, uh, bee products, sour medicinal plants or fruits like lemon, lemon, lemon juice. And we know that the honey is acidic, uh, propolis is a bit acidic, royal gel is acidic. So we have uh, many bee products, uh, they are a bit acidic except the apilar nil, the drone larvae. Okay, salt is good for the kidneys uh, and also for the immune system. Uh, salt, uh, yes, like this, spicy is good for the immune system mainly and for the blood flow. Sweet is good for the connective tissue, for the stomach, pancreas, for digestion, and also to give energy into the body. And the best product here is honey, of course. And bitter is also good for the blood flow and to detox, to detox the liver and to clean the digestive tract. We know that the COVID uh, virus, the SARS-CoV-2, it goes to receptors, mainly to the lungs, but also into the digestive system. So if somebody takes uh, bitter plants, we have a bit of tendency to like diarrhea, but this is good because it's a mechanical elimination of the virus. So when the patient at the first uh, days of the disease gets diarrhea, it's a good thing. It should not be stopped because the body wants to clean itself from the virus. We have all kinds of colors and we can use the colors in chromotherapy. We, can have, we have plants which are warming up and plants which are uh, cooling down. We know here the thyme, thyme is a plant, but there are many other plants which are uh, warming up the body because uh, they are just heating. If you take, for example, chili or mustard or onion or garlic or uh, curry, uh, uh, also it will warm up your mouth and it, it also it's warming up the body. And in case of COVID-19, in the first phases and middle phases, when the fever is very important, it's good to increase the fever in the body, to improve the, the temperature in the body with such kind of plants. And if a patient has a lot of panic, it's, it has a fear because it looks to the television, to mass media, and it hears all kinds of bad news. Uh, Omicron is coming. Oh, Omicron is not bad, uh, they said in South uh, Africa, but oh, it's very, very dangerous. So the people get in panic very easy. So if they get in panic, they consume a lot of oxygen because the brain consumes a lot of oxygen. So it's not good for COVID. So in this situation, we can use plants like this one, which are calming down the brain, okay? So we have also plants which are increasing the humidity in the body, for example, in the lungs, and other ones which are uh, drying, like diuretics. Now, in the case of COVID-19, we know that uh, people which are having the, the worst situations are the ones which are living in polluted areas, polluted cities. You know, like if they started in China, in Wuhan, it's a pretty polluted area. Then we had in Lombardia, in uh, North Italy, we have in uh, New York, we have in major cities. If you look to the statistics, you'll see that most of the people which are having COVID are living in the cities, especially in polluted cities. In a city which has pollution, it has a lot of smoke. The lungs are, are attacked by these smoke particles. And then the mucus from the lungs inside uh, is too charged and must be eliminated by the body. So if the, the body has... Uh, 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 the possibility to make a, a fluid mucus, then it can eliminate easier this mucus uh, with uh, smoke, but also with viruses. And it helps the, what is called expectoration. So uh, here it's very, very good, uh, this kind of flower, linden, linden, uh, linden uh, flower. So uh, search in your area, what is the best uh, medicinal plant to eliminate the mucus from the lungs, okay? And also this is important even in the hospital, because in the hospital, the doctors need to use oxygen, but if they use too much the oxygen, the oxygen will dry the lungs. And uh, normally they should use the oxygen only 20 minutes, maximum 25 minutes, and then take a break of five to 10 minutes. 
to allow the, the lungs to uh, uh, get again uh, its, uh, their uh, humidity. So attention not to be too much. And uh, in this situation, the, the patients can drink uh, uh, tea uh, with this kind of linear flower. And you must identify in your areas. Uh, you speak with your pharmacologist, uh, specialist in uh, uh, botanics, in medicinal plants, which are the best plants for, from your area to help the lung to clean itself. Okay, other plants are having a strong aroma, strong odor, like uh, basil here, uh, which is very strong aromatic. And basil, it's good antibacterial, we know for a long time. And the bees are collecting also the nectar and the pollen. And we have in Romania basil honey. Uh, it's not a big amount, but we have it. And these are very, very good for aroma therapy. So uh, again, you need to find out in your countries which are the best aromatic plants because aromatic plants, most of them are also directly or indirectly antiviral or sustainer uh, uh, of the immune system. And here there are flowers which have almost no, no odor. Okay, pharmacological effects, antiviral, antimicrobial, antimicotic, antiparasitary, all of them are important. Because we know that in COVID-19, uh, the people which are getting uh, very war very bad are the ones which are having co-infections. And co-infections means not only the virus SARS-CoV-2, but several other viruses may be present, or several bacteria are present. For example, a patient which has COVID-19, but also it has uh, Lyme disease, Borrelios, will be much difficult, much more difficult to cure. So if somebody has fungus, candida, and also the SARS-CoV-2 cannot be cured easily, and also with parasites. So in this situation, it is a very, very good helper to get the medicinal plants and the bee products, which are covering all these areas, okay? Then you have other kinds of effects from the medicinal bee plants, antioxidant, because it blocks the free radical against the loss of temperature of the body, uh, against excessive coldness and so on. Then you have uh, biochemical effects, anti-inflammatory increasing or decreasing of pH. And here, one important point, uh, there are studies who show that the people having a vegetarian diet, a vegan, vegan uh, diet, they have a lower uh, risk to get COVID. And this can be explained by the fact that the people having a vegetarian diet they have a blood more fluid, their plasma, their serum in the blood, it's more clean, it's uh, not dirty if you want. Uh, and then uh, this allows the immune system, the white blood cells to travel much faster in the body and catch the viruses even before they enter into the cells or immediately after they enter into the cells. But people eating too much meat, they have a pH, acidic pH, and they have a lot of toxins from the meat, which are coming from the large intestine, for example. And this toxicity in the body is not good for the immune system because it creates also a lot of free radicals. And the free radicals attacks also the uh, white blood cells and the white blood cells cannot survive in a pH uh, acidic in environment very well. Okay, so uh, the medicinal plants offers also a lot of enzymes or helps in the production of enzymes. This is very important. For example, we give bee pollen, which is very rich in, in uh, enzymes, but also bee pollen is very rich in essential amino acids. And these essential amino acids are uh, used to create enzymes. And also we have uh, this kind of effect, depurative, which is cleaning, antitoxical, et cetera. We have protection, protection of the physical structure of the human uh, body and animal body through flavonoids especially, or mineral salts or trace elements. Here are a few words about the polyphenols. When we inhale propolis, or we breathe the propolis through nebulizers, we get a, a kind of a protection of the lungs inside of the bronchia, or even very deep into the alveoles, because these polyphenols are very small molecules, and they can create a kind of layer of protection and can block those uh, receptors, AC2 receptors. So it's just a physical protection or biochemical protection, if you want. Okay, then another topic very, very important is the regeneration of the physical body because uh, when you get COVID-19, we get a, a lot of destruction 
the cells in the lungs are destroyed or the cells into the digestive system or into the cardiovascular system. Many of them are destroyed by the, those spike proteins and even sometimes even by the vaccines. So we, you need very quickly regeneration. Uh, even if a tissue or part of the tissue is destroyed, like in the case of an abscess or a wound, uh, then uh, if the body has enough regeneration power, because we give uh, him enough, enough amino acids, flavonoids, carbohydrates, mucopolysaccharides, stress elements, then that part of the body will regenerate quickly. So it's not so damaging. And this is especially important post COVID. So after the COVID, we must focus on this kind of uh, regeneration. Okay, then with the medicinal bee plants and with the bee products, we help the functioning of the internal organs, especially of those internal organs, which are, uh, we call in Chinese medicine, uh, full organs, which are empty organs, more or less, like a small intestine, large intestine, the stomach, the urinary bladder, or the uh, here, the, the uh, biliary, uh, the gallbladder. These kind of organs can be helped uh, very quickly with medicinal plants. They react very quickly. For example, if I have a constipation, a blockage in the large intestine, I can get medicinal plants which are laxative, like aloe vera, for example, which is a very bitter plant. And this will help the elimination of the feces from the large intestine. Or uh, if I have a problem into the gallbladder, like gallbladder is too lazy, it's dyskinetic, it's, uh, it has uh, uh, enough, not enough power for various reasons. I can give bitter plants uh, and other uh, kind of re uh, remedies like propolis to activate this uh, organ. But to activate the, the uh, full density organs like the liver, uh, they are very thick in structure. They have almost no empty spaces, no air like this one here. So regeneration of the liver takes much more time like weeks or months. So we can regenerate the liver with pollen, for example, it's fantastic for the liver regeneration. But uh, in order to clean faster the liver, we must first of all clean the gallbladder to eliminate the toxins easier from the, the liver. And here is to take enough uh, lemon juice or uh, grapefruit, anything which is sour and bitter will clean faster the liver. And once the liver is clean, then we can start the regeneration. Like we have a, an old house, which is dirty. Uh, before we start the regeneration, must, we must clean the house. Okay. Now there are effects on various apparatus like cardiovascular, digestive, or osteoarticular on our full systems like nervous, endocrine, or immune system, anti-tumoral effects, and so on. Practically all kinds of pharmacological effects, which we know from medicine, from pharmacy, they are present also in medicinal plants. Now indications of these plants, there are huge amounts of indications in human veterinary medicine, nutrition, sport medicine, cosmetics, etc. Uh, contraindications, fortunately for contraindications, we are much, much better than the pharma industry because we uh, uh, do have in the bee products very small amounts of allergies, uh, very seldom. And they can be uh, spotted if we take a very small amount of a product at the beginning. Uh, we do not start uh, from the very beginning with large amounts. Then we have sometimes intolerances and sometimes excessive reactions. Like when we make a cleansing of the body, like we clean the large intestine, we may have a diarrhea, but this is a healing kind of effect. Also like Professor Mamdouk Abdul Rahman uh, from Egypt told us in several conferences, when you get uh, honey, to inhale the honey, uh, to breathe as aerosols, the honey and propolis, you, the, the lung starts to cough uh, to eliminate the mucus. And this is a good reaction, it's not an adverse reaction. So the people must be calmed down. And then in a couple of hours or maybe two, three days after the, the, that organ is cleaned, then this excessive reaction is not coming anymore. So le, uh, not so many uh, contraindications. Administration of the medicinal plants, like of the bee products, we can administer them through all anatomical ways, orally, sublingually, external, like on the skin, on mucosas, intravenous, like Professor Mamduk is telling us to use honey. And also in Germany now, they are using uh, uh, propolis green extract from Bacaris dracuculifolia, 
water propolis extract from Bacaris, from the green propolis, intravenous. Intraocular, like for the eyes, subconjunctival, of course, intravaginal, intrarectal, and so on. Ideally in uh, COVID is to use all these anatomical ways to have uh, better and faster results. What kind of preparations and products should we use in COVID? Again, all forms, uh, many, many different forms to have uh, better results and uh, uh, to, to adapt this, uh, these products on the all anatomical uh, ways. For example, tinctures we can uh, take orally or sublingually or through the skin even. Injectable can be intramuscular, but also intravenous, capsules we swallow, and so on. Mixtures with honey, you can put also on the skin, creams, liniments on the skin, and so on. Is it good to mix the products with medicinal plants? Of course, it is a very good idea because mixing these uh, uh, two kinds of things, we mix the uh, active substances and we create a synergy. And uh, ideally, the, the key word here is to use the medicinal plants, to use the aromatic substances, and to use the B products. And this is called api phyto aromatherapy. So all these three big, big disciplines, they should be used together also against COVID because we have a better synergy and we can heal faster. Also, it is very good to have honey as a vehicle. When, whenever you give a, a drug or remedy against COVID-19, uh, uh, ideal is to give it together with honey. Like we put that remedy into honey on a teaspoon of honey or in a combination, like when we breathe, for example, we need, we know that an essential oil like oregano oil is good antiviral. So be, before we inhale it as a nebulizer through nebulizer or aerosols, it's good to put it in honey because our body loves honey. Every single cell of our body loves honey. So uh, the, the absorption to the body, the absorption is much better with honey than without honey. Okay, propolis and honey are also excellent protectors against many, many factors which affect, attack our organism like uh, uh, microbes, cosmic solar radiation and so on. And now a few nice photos for our hearts and souls. Uh, I, this is a plant which you know, it's crocus. This one is uh, zinnia, lotus. Uh, here is acacia, lavender in, in uh, France. Here is uh, chestnut, edible chestnut, a sunflower. This one is another plant, uh, which is a flower which is growing in Romania a lot and gives a lot of pollen. Uh, this one, puppy, is very good also. It, has a, it makes a, a pollen which is very, very bitter. Okay, let me stop a bit the share yeah. screen because I see there are some... Been here. Okay, so I come back. Uh, okay. Now, can you see again this, my share screen? Yeah, I believe so, I hope so. Okay, so uh, more plants like this one. Let we do not see it. Oh, okay, okay, so sorry, let, let me start again the share screen because it was that noise. Okay. Share screen again, yes. Okay, now you, you can see it? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you, okay. So uh, shortly, one, one thing we know that the, the pollen from uh, puppy is usually black. You saw it before, like this one is black pollen, but some other types of uh, puppies, they have yellow pollen. So the color of the pollen depends on the color of this part, the anthers of the flower not the color of the uh, petals here. Okay, then we have uh, uh, Crategus, uh, which is very, very good for the COVID patients, which are having cardiovascular problems. Uh, Crategus is known all over the world. Uh, we use the flowers, we use the leaves, but also we can use the nectar in form of honey. And we can use also the pollen from Hawthorne. And also we can use the fruits from Hawthorne. So it's a very, very precious uh, uh, shrub which grows a lot in uh, temperate areas like Europe or New Zealand, uh, North America, South America. And again, it's very, very good for the heart. So if your patient with COVID has some heart problems or cardiovascular problems, like here, we know that uh, it comes a lot of uh, blood clots, thrombosis, sometimes hemorrhagy, 
and the, the, the cardiovascular system is attacked by the virus. So we need such kind of plants to protect the cardiovascular system. Okay, we have also another plant, very, very good, Rosa Canina, uh, rose dog, rose dog is, or dog rose, dog rose it's in English, which gives uh, this kind of fruits which are very rich in vitamin C and magnesium. And magnesium is very important besides zinc and vitamins and so on and so on to fight COVID. Okay, so here are some tables about the composition, why is vitamin C important for the, our metabolism? Okay, then other trees, acacia, we have in Romania, this kind of acacia, Robinia pseudacacia, which is very good as a, a sedative plant. It calms down the nervous system and it gives also an excellent honey, which is very rich in fructose. And fructose goes into the bloodstream very easy without uh, need of energy. So uh, if you want to, to treat a patient which is very, very uh, tired, uh, acacia honey is better than other forms of honey, at least until the patient gets uh, better. Okay, so uh, here is another kind of plant, but this one is good. It's good for the immune system. It's like mustard uh, family of plant. Mustard is spicy. Spice is good for the immune system. But unfortunately, being a monoculture, uh, in many countries, these kind of plants are sprayed with insecticides. So here it's at the limit. Uh, maybe we should not use it for the difficult cases or severe cases, maybe just for, or for a prevention. Okay, again, other kind of flowers, sunflower, I go quickly. So this is Taraxacum, very, very important. There is also a research which says that Taraxacum, dandelion, can block the, those receptors, ACE2 receptors, where the virus is uh, locking down going uh, connected. This one, chestnut, edible chestnut is very, very good for the bees. And it makes uh, honey, which is very bitter. And again, bitter is very good for detox. Okay, this one, clover, very good also against cancer. And by the way, when we treat patients against COVID, we must also treat the comorbidities. And many people which are having COVID, they die not only because of the COVID, but also because of these other diseases like diabetes, uh, uh, high blood pressure, and uh, obesity, and so on and so on. Okay, so this is again dog rose, tilia, lavender. Okay, uh, yeah, it's somebody which also opened again the microphone. It, please uh, kindly uh, block the microphone. No, I'm uh, Okay, keep the microphone, Otarog. Okay. So then Phacelia tanacetifolia, it's very good. Okay, uh, because we can get this kind of blue pollen, it's very interesting. Sunflower, again, uh, it has some oily kind of uh, pollen and nectar, which is very good also for the immune system. Okay, this on lotus and so on. Okay, this one is very good, Pronospinosa. Uh, it has, uh, uh, it makes fruits which are very astringent. Okay, uh, propolis from Bacaris, you know, the bees are cutting down these buds with their mandibles. It's not like in our uh, European kind of uh, bees, which are uh, just licking the buds. So just like you take uh, ice cream, but uh, because the, this kind of substances in uh, temperate areas where you have the poplars, they get these resins and the uh, balsams which are very sticky outside the, the, the buds. But in Brazil, this tree, Bacaris, Baharis dracunfolifolia, uh, it's very, very spicy. It has a lot of antiviral substances, but also anti-tumoral substances. And the bees are coming, they are really cutting these buds. And you see here, it's like pieces of the, the buds of the, this shrub. And then the bees in the beehive, they add the, propol the beeswax, and they create the famous green Brazilian propolis. Okay, so I go fast, uh, you know, again, dandelion, dandelion, very important, pollen. Here, one, one a few ideas. It's uh, when you have many pathologies, many diseases, it's better to use various kinds of pollen because uh, each kind of pollen has different kinds of substances. So uh, it's good to have a kind of cocktail, a mixture of many pharmacologically useful substances. 
but if it's a special disease, somebody has a, uh, uh, just one disease, uh, and we know that a certain plant is good against that disease, then we may use only one type of pollen. Like I told you before, if it's a cardiovascular disease, like heart disease, some pollen is very good for uh, heart diseases, so we should use monopollen. Uh, onion is rich in quercetin, and quercetin is antiviral, so we can get quercetin from onions, also from propolis, from pollen, even from honey sometimes, but it's much, much bigger source of quercetin, it's in onion. So if anybody has uh, uh, COVID-19, the first symptoms or to prevent is good to eat onion, of course, raw onion would be better. Okay, it, of course, if there are no problems with the stomach, like gastritis and so on. And same is for, for uh, other kind of uh, 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 vegetables which are spicy, like garlic. Hypericum perforatum, St. John's Worth, is very good for immune system. It's immune stimulator. It's an also antidepressant. And many people are depressed all over the world now because of the bad mass media and they have fear, they are depressed, they cannot see their grandchildren uh, or vice versa, the, the adults cannot see their grandparents because they are isolated, which is stupid, in my opinion, to have this kind of isolation between these uh, ages, because there are many other measures which you can use not to, to get problems. So in this situation, when it's depression, uh, we should use plants which are antidepressant. Calendula officinalis, regenerative for the wounds. Potbal, this Tusilago farfara is good for the, uh, against the uh, 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 wet cough. Then basil, I told you before, then is clover, Corylus avellana, Rubus ideus. Uh, you see here, very, very good. These are doing a lot of good work as pollinators. And then we have also this kind of chili uh, plants, which are increasing the heat in the body biochemically. Okay, and then this one, sour fruits like this one, sour cherries, which are good for the liver to clean the liver. And then lung, uh, lung uh, plant, pulmonaria officinalis, helps also the lungs, salix. These are bitter plants. This one is very, very important. It's very antibacterial, it's thyme. No, thyme here uh, grows in, in Greece. This is Greece, even on the beaches. And it's very, very spicy and it's very powerful antibacterial. Okay, borage, Chelidonium, Galanthus, Vaccinum myrtillus. Okay, so all kind of plants that can be used. One word here on there are sometimes uh, plants which are extremely toxic like Datura stramonium is very, very toxic. And uh, every part of this plant is toxic, like the, the flowers, the leaves, the, the stems, and so on. So we should not plant such flowers in our gardens. Uh, the bees somehow, they collect the pollen and they survive after collecting this pollen, uh, most probably. Uh, so, but we should not use it in our gardens. Peach flower. Okay, then again, some, some combinations of medicine plants for certain organs, like aloe vera here, it's flower from aloe vera. Okay, for the lung, for the heart here, when the heart is too panicked in fear, fe heart can feel uh, the fear. We can use this kind of flowers to calm down the, the heart for the digestive system, for respiratory system. We know for many, many years, eucalyptus essential oil can be used to improve the breathing for the skin, for cosmetics, for our beauty, for our well-being. We can use also a combination of uh, bee products and medicinal plants. This one is very good, this plant for the liver. Okay, and a, a few last words. Uh, we, without bees, we know that we cannot have biodiversity. No biodiversity, we cannot get all these foods. So we must be very thankful to our bees uh, because they are pollinating our crops and uh, help them, protect them, uh, uh, help them to have a, a happy life because if they have a happy life, we can have also a happy life. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. And now I open the floor to uh, discussions on this topic on medicinal bee plants.
Uh, and uh, uh, I launch my question to all of you uh, to tell me what kind of medicinal plants do you use in your countries to prevent or to treat diseases? We can say the folk name or Latin name if you want, or just say how do you use the medicinal plants? Okay, who is starting? Uh, just raise your hand, or you can also open your microphone uh, if you want to present your uh, use of the medicinal plants. Okay, nobody? Nina, yes, Nina, you'll, you'll come after me after I present medicinal beekeeping, but please, please tell us uh, what do you use as medicinal plants? I use, uh, thank you for your, for the opportunity to speak, Stefan. Uh, I must say I use most of the plants you showed us. Uh, most of the plants I uh, wanted to add, thyme grows in Slovenia also, not only in Greece and in Croatia. <laughs> it's all around there. Uh, so the linden also. Um, most of the plants we find here. Uh, when you showed us your table with meliferous plants, I searched for ours. It was really first project of our institute in 2015. It's here. Wow. Yeah, we got um, it in a little book. Um, it's um, the first line here you see is Latin name, then we have Slovenian name, and then we have time uh, of flowering, and then we have what's the specialty of the plant for the bees, like uh, uh, first uh, meadow or first pollen, or, or uh, when do we um, use it for us in food and stuff like that. So um, I think you, your presentation was really informative and great. And um, I wish, it would be easy to, um, in Slovenia it is a challenge to get to find a pollen that is specific, that it's not mixed. Hmm. And wow. I think uh, mostly when you, um, nature provides us with what we need at the time we need it. So the pollen you can find in spring, you must consume in spring. This is my belief. Yes, very, very good. So. We, we take the bee products according to the season, also the plants, medicinal plants according to the season, as fresh as possible. But of course, in the case of uh, the medicinal plants, we can dry them or we can conserve them in form of a tincture, or there is another very good method to put the medicinal plant in honey. And uh, if the medicinal plant has too much water, you can put in honey 50-50, like 50% the plant, 50% honey, and then because it has water and may ferment, you put it in a freezer. You just put it into the freezer. And in the freezer is no problem for fermentation. Okay, Professor Nsgalo Otieno. Okay, please activate your microphone. I think you, you want to come to the discussion. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the nice presentation. Can you, uh, sorry, sorry, can you activate your camera if you have a camera there? I have a camera. Okay, if you need the camera. The video, yes, very good. Okay, but turn turn around because you have the light behind you and we cannot see your face. Turn around. Uh, okay. <laughs> turn around, yes. Okay. Can you see me? Now it's, now it's perfect. Okay. Okay. Yes. I, I am calling from uh, Gotkayayo in Kenya. Yes. And uh, I'm a member of Gotkayayo Beekeepers. Okay. For medicinal uh, plants that are used for by bees, especially if we look at uh, COVID-19, one of the most effective methods is steaming. And when we are steaming, we get a lot of leaves together, boil them, covering them, and then you cover yourself with a blanket and open, open the, the lid of the container and you breathe in, you breathe in, you inhale that steam. And if it's, this is done several times, 
you get uh, relief very fast from uh, COVID-19. Okay. What kind and of I'll, plants? What kind of plants you have? I'll just mention a few plants that we use. Uh, a number of them are fruit fruit plants uh, okay. that uh, that we have around. Then we have Lantana camara, we have Dandelion, we have uh, Biden spilosa, the blackjack, and many others that are put together to form this concoction for for steaming. Okay, very Otherwise, very good. We, we have a very rich uh, biodiversity because uh, where I am, we are at the foot of a, a hill and most of it is preserved with the indigenous plants where bees pick their, their pollen and nectar. I've just mentioned a few, uh, maybe eventually sometimes if we have a chance, we can share even some pictures of the flowers that bees use in this place. Okay, very, very good, Professor. It will be very good if you can uh, write an article or to make a PowerPoint with uh, the photos of the plants and the recipes and the method you use, and then send us this PowerPoint or in form of PDF, and then we'll share with all our international community, yes, to learn from you. So just just make this uh, this uh, article. You understand? Yeah, we can make the article. Yes. And probably even publish it. Yes. We we are having uh, we have uh, African Association of Insect Scientists, and every two years we have a conference in one of the African countries. This time it was supposed to be in Ethiopia. But because of the state of emergency, we could not have it uh, last month. Mm -hmm. So we have postponed it to somewhere in February. And I think part of that information will be shared during that conference. Then we can share it with the rest of the world. Okay, very, very good. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, now, uh, uh, let's see here, I see in the chat, by the way, you can put your recipes here in the chat because we'll save, save also the messages in the chat. I see here, uh, John said to all of us, I put Ele Campane in Ula Helenium in honey, 50-50, like 50-50% and keep in the fridge as protection. And this is good for clearing, clearing the lungs. And it was also, one question here in the chat from Bridget. What kind of medium can we use to blend herbs if, uh, with honey? What do you mean, Bridget, by medium? Like device or tool? Yes? I was wondering, Stefan, if um, you, you can't use ethyl alcohol, can you? Ah, you the, want, or... Okay, the solvent. So, the, yeah, so, or could you put it in, say, coconut oil or that? I, I think I put that question up before okay. you were mentioning putting the herbs directly into the honey. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, now, now there is here, the best advice I have for you is to, to go, there are big books on herbal medicine, big books on herbal medicine. And each plant has special substances, which may solve very easy in water and honey has water but other substances are dissolved better in alcohol and other substances are better dissolved in fats. Like you said, coconut uh, oil or butter or whatever. So, uh, or oils like vegetable oils. So the best is you get these books and then you see, okay, this plant is antiviral, this is antiviral. Then you open the, the book to that chapter. And then you see there in the description of the plant, the best extraction of this plant is in this solvent. And then you make it and then you combine it in your preparations. Okay? Good. Uh, I saw also, thank you, thank you very much, Bridget, too. Uh, I see here the raised hand from uh, Simon and Ruth. What medicinal plants do you use, Simon and Ruth, in Australia, in your area on the East Coast? Yes. Yes, now we can see you. Yeah, 
thank you for your wonderful presentation. It's very in that very good, always good. Um, and of course, everyone here will know from in Australia, we have uh, the liptospermum plants uh, called jelly bush or manuka plants. Um, and these plants are becoming very good for the recovery in the COVID patient. Um, in terms of the recovery, we'll have good anti-inflammatory properties, um, antibacterial to fight the, the COVID, and antifungal if there's problems in that department as well. So we and um, there are some newer studies coming online with the university to suggest that some of the volatiles from the plants, um, the oils from specific species will be very good uh, to use in inhalations um, uh, studies and, and symptoms. So there's uh, ongoing um, good prospects for more uh, out, better outcomes uh, in Australian plants here. Um, these are the ones we mainly know and have good evidence by science on to, to uh, mention it in this, in this topic. I know that our university, the University of Sunshine Coast, they are doing um, some studies on extracting, extracting the oils for um, inhaling. I don't think that they, they are still in the process when we inquire if we can get a, an article to read an article or to know more about this study. And they said they're still in process. So I guess that we will be able to know more about it when they publish the paper. Very, very good, very good input. Yes, Australia is very rich in medicinal plants too, and bee plants, and excellent bee products. We hope to, to come to Australia, maybe next year when COVID will be gone, we come to Australia to an international conference, live conference. Bridget already organized together with you, excellent conference online, uh, when it was like last month, yes? And um, yes. Uh, I, I'm it's sure- Last week. Last week, last wow. Week. <laughs> Time is running so fast. <laughs> last month. Last month. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, uh, I'm sure uh, we'll have many, many good friends uh, continuing to have many cooperation there. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, Simon yeah. and uh, Ruth, for your input. Thank you. And then uh, let's see, uh, Mirela. Mirela, you want to tell us what do you use in Romania in your wonderful area? What kind of medicinal plants against COVID? Besides bee products, which we use always, I, I use a sort of a plants, depends if it's a pulmonary affected or digestion. But always I uh, have uh, Artemisia brotanum, let me go in Romania, which okay. is a cousin with. Um, Wormwood with Artemisia. Oh, yes. Because yes. Uh, we know Artemisia against uh, COVID. And on the other hand, it's very good for fever and also to restore the digestive power if it's affected. And usually it's affected when it's fever, no matter if it's uh, lungs or uh, digestive system affected. If it's lungs, <clears throat> already a few studies last year about Lonicera, Capricolium for the lungs and uh, I used that herb and also Grindelia, Grindelia robusta, I will look for a scientific name, Grindelia robusta is the, the name, also eucalyptus leaves or um, Populus nigra for uh, stimulating uh, immunity and also antiviral activity and fine. Also, we use a lot of essential oils, not only herbs. These herbs, I use them as a powder usually. Just ground and take them four or five times per day. Under and the tongue? Under the tongue for 15, 20 minutes mm -hmm. to improve the absorption. But when, and many times I, I saw that it appeared that uh, very dry, cough, dryness on the system. And then dried herbs is not enough. And then we make even an infusion or 
we macerate the plant and then we give them wool and in that infusion of herbs we use honey and if it's necessary a little amount of ghee or uh, coconut oil very good very good but we have to be careful to this combination because there is needed a proportion we never can put honey and uh, ghee at the same quantity because Ayurveda says you give a kind of toxicity in the body. Yes. So yes. we have to put one third honey and two third uh, ghee or vice versa. We have to choose according to the patient need. Yes, to the Ayurveda type. Like when, when for the general people which are here, when somebody is very skinny, a uh, smoker, is a dried person, then probably you use a bit more ghee. But if somebody fatty, you not use so much ghee in the recipe. Isn't yeah, it? we also have to see how much the dryness it is in that yes. moment. In that organ in that moment. Very good. In, Very uh, good. That moment. Also, we use that uh, steamy things with uh, thyme or uh, eucalyptus, as I said, and we also can use, I prefer to use as essential oil uh, pine because it's a little bit more soft for the lamb. Thyme pine. oil? Pine. Ah, pine, yes. Pine, pine. essential yes. oil. Yes, yes. Like Very good. Uh -huh. uh, but there are many plants. Somebody says, uh, Marina, Crategus honey, yeah. Yes, there are many yes. things that we can use. Also, sometimes I use um, bud extract. And if there is, um, how do you say, allergic, um, component or a spasticity on the bronchial system, then we can use the um, Ribes Negro. Okay. Okay. Very, very good. Thank you very much, Mirella. Very good advices. It is recorded. Everybody will take notes <laughs> afterwards. Okay. Very good. Uh, okay. Is it anybody else who would like to, to give some, uh, some inputs here? And then uh, we go to Nina to give her presentation. I had also one presentation on medicinal beekeeping, uh, but uh, okay, let, let me, okay, because it's important for the people who actually are not uh, into the, the beekeeping so much. So let me show you uh, just one slide. Yesterday I gave into Romanian uh, uh, conference, I gave more details, but I- Before you found your file, yes. I will tell something in this Yes, time, please. Okay? Please, Alina. Uh, one um, very beautiful um, um, products, what it's working very well, it's extract of the propolis in ghee. In ghee? Yes, in ghee. What yes. we use it, yes, and uh, it's really working very well. And if we mix together with honey too, it's incredible results to clean all the respiratory very system. Very good. And the recept, what I'm writing in the um, uh, chat, with fallopia honey and uh, uh, timus essential oil. This is incredible quickly work to clean the mucus. Okay. And to can put it out. Very good. Thank you very much, Alina. Thank you. Yes, Mirella, activate your microphone. I remember about essential oils. Wintergreen essential oil is a very good anti-inflammatory and also anti -fog. And I use this even uh, when it was a loss of smell. And in few hours, the smell can be recovered because it's a very good anti-inflammatory. Yes, very good. And also winter One green drop, oil. Two drops. Yes. With it's, honey. it's interesting that winter green oil is also good against Varroa. It's one of the aromatherapy against Varroa. Okay, yes, Professor Ngalo from Kenya. What, would you like to add something? Yes, I, I, I want to add that it seems that uh, Eucalyptus is a universal kind of uh, plant used in many countries. We use it a lot in respiratory disorders in Kenya, especially for the steaming and for some other, some other corrective measures. And then for cough, there's a concoction that you can have uh, a, a number of uh, products mixed together with the honey like you can have uh, ginger, you can have uh, garlic, onion, and black pepper mixed with the oil, with, with, with honey. 
It helps also in uh, cough and in opening the respiratory system. Yes, very, very good. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you. Okay, very good. This was also recorded. Okay, let me show you my, my short slide on, uh, on the medicinal beekeeping because it's very good to have good medicinal plants, but then the beekeepers must know how to collect these bee products in an appropriate way to respect the rules. And I give you just the most important uh, rules and principles for, for this, okay? So let me mute all here, not to have noises. And let me share again the screen with you. This is the, the, the slide I wanted to show you. Uh, okay, can you see it in full screen? Yes. Now, now it's in full screen, now it's in full screen, yes? Okay, so the, the essence of my presentation on uh, medicinal beekeeping is that we should not um, uh, put in uh, contact the beehive and the bee products which are inside too much light. The light destroys enzymes. It was a professor in Germany, Professor Dustmann. He already showed 30 years ago that uh, sunlight destroys various enzymes in honey. If the honey is dark, color honey, like uh, honeydew honey, then it's not so much damaged by the light. But most of the other kind of honeys, they are destroyed. The enzymes are destroyed by the light. And uh, they are not any more medicinal. They are good as sweetener, but not as medicinal. Heat, of course, we know destroys the vitamins and also destroys the enzymes. So never go with the bee products over 40, 42 degrees Celsius. There are some companies which are um, uh, exploiting, let's say, the propolis. They are warming too much, too high. They are boiling the propolis. Sometimes there are some research which says that the propolis, which is given, uh, goes to 105 degrees Celsius. Some extracts may be very good antibacterial, but you lose a lot of essential oils in this situation, which is not very good. So heat is not a good friend of the bee products. The wind, the air, which has oxygen, like oxygen and dust and the viruses and so on, it's also not good. So uh, do not uh, keep your bee products at open air. Uh, do not uh, forget to put the lid on your jars and avoid this kind of air currents uh, at all costs. Oxygen is damaging, it's oxidizing all bee products. If you leave propolis outside, you'll see after a while it gets a very dark color. Uh, pollen, on the contrary, when it's in contact with oxygen, loses the colors. So uh, oxygen is not good. That's why the bees, they are protecting their honey uh, and even the, the pollen in the form of bee bread with the capping, with the wax, because they know that oxygen is not good. So when you do uh, a, a centrifugation of honey to get uh, honey, fluid honey in the jars, because the, the customers are asking for this, we are exposing our honey to oxygen, to the air, and this is not good. Another very bad thing is for the bee products, all bee products, royal jelly, apilar, nil, bee pollen, bee venom, and so on, it's water. So water helps the microbes to develop, and water is also diluting the uh, components from the bee products. And uh, we can use water only when we, we take the product in our body, but not when we store uh, the, the products. Like, Water should not come in contact with the, the bee products. If it comes in contact with the products, like we put a fresh fruit, which has a lot of water, we put it in honey, we must block the multiplication of the bacteria by putting that mixture, honey, fruit mixture into the freezer. And now a la last thing here is that we need to avoid uh, that the, this kind of microbes are coming to the bee products to diminish at least their number. Because the truth is, if you ask a microbiologist specialized into the microbiome or microbiota, if you want, of the beehive, there are uh, specialists which search to see what kind of bacteria can we find in the beehive and what kind of other uh, living beings. And it's a huge amount of different uh, bacteria, fungus, uh, other insects, uh, and so on and so on, which can be present in the bee colony. But it's true, in the same time, that this kind of bacteria are much, much less 
inside the, the beehive than outside of the beehive, okay? And there is another thing which we should, we should add into this uh, Shema, it's Varroa. We know Varroa, it's an insect which is like a, like a vampire, which sucks uh, uh, the blood, the hemolymph, which sucks the fats from the, the, the bee body. So uh, this should be also under control. So, okay, as a summary of this topic, when we avoid all these factors, and there are many rules for each of these factors, like we should use very uh, like clean gloves, like surgical gloves. And uh, we are expecting uh, all, all kinds of rules of related to cleanness. Then we can get very good products. And there is one other rule, and all specialists in the quality of bee products, like, uh, like Mr. Etienne Bruno from Belgium, who is responsible of the quality, api quality part in Apimondia, he always says that the best bee products are the raw bee products, not the processed bee products. So we should uh, not make all kinds of complicated processing, boiling, heating, and so on. The only exception is for propolis, which is some situations in order to get the active components is better to use the heat. But even in the case of propolis, we can use some, some methods like grinding the propolis with bee pollen, like chewing the propolis with oily seeds. And then we'll, we'll get also this wonderful active components already in our mouth and in our system. Okay, so this is the rule. And uh, to conclude this kind of presentation, the beekeeper needs to be in his, his apiary like a surgeon in an operation room. Okay, so this was the short presentation on medicinal beekeeping. Uh, we can offer in the future also courses uh, via Zoom or in practice uh, about uh, medicinal beekeeping. Uh, we are working now in Romania to a guide. Uh, guidelines for medicinal beekeeping, which should be very attractive for the beekeepers, because if you look to the model of New Zealand and Australia with the Manuka honey and jelly bush honey, these are very, very, very priceful, very, very important products, which can be sold at higher prices than regular honey. So beekeepers should be motivated to, to get this kind of knowledge on medicinal beekeeping, okay? So now uh, I'd like to give the, the floor to, to my good friend from Slovenia, uh, Nina Ilic. We organized with her and other colleagues from uh, Slovenia uh, recently the API Children Conference. It was the first conference in the world uh, on API therapy for children. And Nina was the heart of this event. Nina, please present your, your paper on how to combine uh, the plants with the big products, please. Uh, many thanks, Stephen, for kind words. Uh, it was uh, really enjoy. Uh, I enjoyed uh, in this conference we organized together. And hello to Kelly and Bridget and friends from Australia. It was such a nice conference last week also. I'm happy to see you here again. Um, host disabled participant sharing screen. <laughs> Please. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, again. sorry. Yes, yes, Nina. Sorry, I put you as co-host now. Yes. Now, now you can share, yes. Okay. Yes. There you go. Do you see my presentation? Yes, it's coming. Wait a second. Yes, and now click on the full screen to see the, you know, the, the button for the full screen. Yes, I did. Okay. Yes. Let's wait a bit. Uh, you, may, you, you went down and on the right? It, it yes, I, did. I, I have full screen. OK, uh, here is not, not coming the full screen. So uh, I suggest you, you stop the share screen, and then you, you increase the slides to 100%. 100%. Yes, I learned this from uh, one colleague from Turkey. There are all kinds of tricks with this Zoom presentations. Yes. Just a sec. So put it first at 100%, then, and then, sh then share the screen. And then. Mm -hmm. Just a sec. Is it better now? Uh, it, it will come. It's coming now. Uh, and now click on that uh, button for the full screen. Yes, there. But click strong. Strong. <laughs> okay. 
So, sometimes you need to click stronger than normal. Okay. Is it now? Is it full screen? Uh, 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 not yet. But uh, now, now let, let's try. There is another button, uh, uh, Nina. If you go up and on the left, very, very up on the left, where is this? Vistavi, Vistavi, Vistavi. On the up, 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 and left. Uh, on your PowerPoint, go with your oh, eyes PowerPoint. up, up, and on the left. And there is one, one button where it says Vistavi. Um, English word? <laughs> I don't know. It's V-S-T-A-V, up and on the left. Okay. I don't see it. Okay, share again the screen. Oh. Right in chat, Stefan. Yeah, yes. Do you see it? Oh. Okay, it's cut. Oh, yes, now it's perfect. Yes, Nina. Okay, go okay. for it. Yes. <laughs> so uh, just let me see if it's working. Yes, it is. I would like to present a holistic approach I've been using uh, in combination of herbal and api um, therapy. So first to introduce myself, uh, some of you already know I am a api therapist. I am also an educator I'm of preschool children and I am a um, food technician. But maybe most of you do not know that I'm also a beaker, come from beekeeping family and also a herbalist family. Uh, and this is the um, topic that's really um, self-evident to me. This, I've been using it in my everyday life. So just a sec. Come on. Yeah, here we go. I would be focusing on prevention against COVID-19. This is the only since this is the only experience that I have. Uh, today I will speak more about my personal um, view of life because uh, this is how we live and how we uh, maintain healthy. I've been I come from um, different uh, branches. Uh, we we uh, when we talk about family from my mother's side, I we come from Poland mountains. And from my father's side, we come from Croatian islands. So I am the mixture, the combination of the two. And so are the uh, knowledges. So is the knowledge actually combined with formal education. So um, I, for the start, I would like to point out, I have been in di this year only in 2021, I have been in direct contact with uh, people that then in uh, two or three days later were positive for COVID for about 15 or more times. Uh, the 10 contacts were um, in the first half of the year and the rest then followed. Uh, every time I remained healthy, once I got cold, but um, nothing, no tests ever shown um, positive on so I think I am pretty um, successful on immunity. So how do I do it? Uh, first, I follow this rule in, in, in Latin, it's non fructificata autumn arbor, quave vere non fruit florid, florid. In, in Croatian language uh, that my grandmother uh, was talk, telling me my whole life, it would sound like, it's not Slovenian, it's Croatian. Um, but in English, it would be like um, the, the old age will ask you what your youth were doing. So this is the main focus here. We have to build our strength. We have to build our immunity when we're healthy and when we, and when we are feeling good. Because when we get sick, we we recover, we do not gain immunity. So um, I believe the important approach here is from holistic point of view. You have to, uh, we have to see a person like the whole, the person is the psychological part, physiological part, um, social part. So uh, there we need nutrition, 
body care, attention to all organ system and person as a whole and muscle movement. Uh, being active and also brain activity is very important, I believe. We have to keep being alive, keep um, educating, and um, uh, eh, we'll talk about it later. So, and uh, the last point would be the medicinal support in situ. What was, what did I think of with that? Um, we'll see. Let's go on. So let's focus first on my uh, former knowledge of nutrition and healthy lifestyle. Uh, first of all, these are some um, points for um, recipes. Uh, if I have 10 minutes for this presentation, so I cannot uh, write and discuss all these recipes. Uh, please kindly use my email contact in the end uh, if you would like more. Maybe if uh, somebody will show interest, I can write some of these recipes in the chat area. Uh, here are just some listed. Api fruit snack. I represented it in years until now more, many times. Then it's tomato, tomato soup and tomato salad. It's just an example. Uh, I use a lot of bee products in nutrition. That does not mean that I start to pretend that I'm a bee and start eating like a bee. Uh, I would like to remain human, so I do eat like human. I just help myself in nutrition, like uh, with um, adding some um, bee products. So um, every year I offer my family, this is the treatment for me and my family. Uh, I prepare this spring soup. We call it spring soup. I learned it from my mother. She learned it from her mother and so on. So uh, its, um, con it's um, content is of plantain, nettle, daisy, milfoil, sorrel, and dandelion. And you prepare it in a soup with onion and everything. Uh, it's really good for uh, strengthening and for vitality. Um, tomato soup, you do not meet, need my recipe for that. You have your own recipe in the end, like a uh, uh, gourmet approach. You add a little pollen on, it, on top of it and it's perfect, it's great. You can do the same with the salad that does not have to be the tomato. Uh, then chickpea side dish, I, I really, really think it's wonderful if you combine it with propolis. Uh, most easy way probably with tincture. Uh, these rosemary recipes, you will see my little girl preparing them in a short video that will follow. Uh, before we go to that video, it's gonna be a minute, it's really short. Um, I would like to point out the, or bring the attention to the difference of lifestyle and therapy. Apitherapy is not consumption of pollen or bee products on never ending way. It's a lifestyle. If you want to do a therapy, you do it like, um, what's the word? Let me see. Like um, uh, curative treatment. So it has a start and an end. So there we go. Let me, let's see first now how my girl, uh, she's learning from me now, how she... I never made it, but I know what it takes. I'm motivated by a mix of emotion. Got my statement and I'm reading it slow so I can understand it fully. Reason to breathe 
So <clears throat> uh, this would be <clears throat> for uh, that recipes. Uh, another uh, suggestion would be in um, uh, this step. Uh, maybe it would be good for me to say now that uh, whenever you do it, you have to catch the right timing. I believe that if you have to, you, when you know you go to a meeting and there are going to be a lot of people there, you need to be strong before you go there and not treat yourself only after. So um, if you want to... Um, feel good and strengthen your uh, health you should consumption consum, consum, how do you, how is the word you have to eat right also nutrition is the one of the main um uh field of our life when we get um elements our body can work with so this is just an example a risotto like from ice pollen onion pumpkin thyme and mustard i think it's um, tastes really good you can try it as you can see it in the picture i put it in directly in the pot uh, when i use coconut oil since coconut oil uh, does not lose its healing components when heated like um, olive oil for example uh, he keep all um, coconut oil keeps his anti-inflammatory action in our body. So I use it a lot in a different uh, ways. So uh, only onion and then some pollen and rice and the rest you can do as you wish, actually. Um, you can use it as side dish or with somebody, something else. So when we talk about health, um, uh, it is important, like, like I mentioned sometime before, uh, person as a whole. So you need to, um, uh, I, I suggest to use B wax in, um, in this candle. Um, you use candles, yeah, natural with clean wax to uh, clear the air in your room. Or sash, I use sash a lot and a lot of uh, hydrolytes. These are my sweethearts, mint, lemon balm, immortal, such, oregano, and thyme. These are, I think every kitchen should contain all those herbs in uh, various uh, forms. I use mostly in hydrolat and fresh um, version. So uh, this is for the cleaning the air we breathe in inside our home. So, uh, like I said before, you have to go strong when you go, go among a lot of people today with this COVID. Uh, here on the picture, I am using royal jelly with a little girl. Uh, to um, I put it in, in here, on, directly on the closed eye. So, uh, it strengthened um, the resilience of the, um, this little organ. Uh, because royal jelly is really strong when it comes to viruses. It has really strong antiviral eff effect. Um, the other thing I would I tried to point out here was um, Immortel. We use it a lot. I keep it in my, my, my educational garden also. Uh, and this plant is the most effective on the skin. The all, the all layers of the skin is so I that's how I use it. Um, okay, first about api potion. Maybe you know this recipe, maybe you do not, uh, but I find it very, very effective, especially in the morning on the empty stomach. Wine vinegar, or it can, it can be apple, of course, but I prefer wine, pollen, and florist honey or uh, flo flower ho forest honey is the best for this, if you ask me, and some warm water. Uh, for drink, here's the picture of my brother <laughs> offering it to you. Um, if you are lucky like I am, then you like the taste of it. Um, this would be for, I drink it for a week or two every morning, and uh, then I stop. You do not uh, mix, you do not want to mix lifestyle with the uh, treatment. Okay. So he's, ha, here is this Ekrams. Uh, Ekrams is the name of this mixture. My little girl gave it. 
Uh, I do not know where she found that word, but she said it's Ekrams, so Ekrams it is. So please, if you use it, you know you will be using Ekrams. <laughs> Ekrams is this mixture of coconut oil, immortal tincture we made ourselves, chestnut honey and propolis tincture. Uh, you combine it in, um, I'm not that specific, but I will say you in a percentage, coconut oil 60%, chestnut honey 25%, propolis tincture 5% and immortal tincture about approximately 10% of the mixture. Uh, you mix it very long, so it uh, you get this, um, uh, you know what I mean probably, like um, the perfect mixture with no parts in it, yeah. So how do I use it? Um, it's great, actually, the first time I did it was uh, when my girl fell, she was jumping from the bed, which is the um, high level bed. It's above me right now. Uh, and uh, something, yeah, she jumped on this wardrobe and it over, she fell and he, she had really ugly bruises on her body. And that's when I heard this mixture. Um, and it was really, really effective. It really helped her um, with the pain and also with the um, um, recovery. For, uh, uh, so afterwards, I recognized the opportunity to use Ekrams in diverse ways. And uh, now I use it also in not in such as massage, area but um i put it on my, on my chest where every time see i work in a kindergartens also um, among others and every time i go there two days before that two evenings i put it this ekrams on hair and in the back in the back you put it on the um area where the lungs are um and it really really helps a lot some uh, when my girl got cold uh, catch caught cold. Yeah, I think you say it like that. Um, I would um, put that her in on her um, body also, and it really, really, really helps uh, to clean the um, um, respiratory uh, part and to feel better soon. So uh, I feel like if you say, if you imagine that our immunity system, like a little army in our blood that uh, is fighting against these viruses and pathogen microorganisms, then we have to help these little guys in our blood to, uh, to make them strong in all the areas like uh, Calvary and the Navy and all <laughs> the, the sorts of army you can think of has to be strong. So when you go, on breathing area, you do not only drink tea, you do not only inhale um, mint or something else, you also need something to, uh, usually you, you, I heard of usage of uh, essential oil of thyme, but I prefer this mixture since I find it stronger. Uh, you go, you can approach healing or strengthening through a deep, all the, uh, organ systems, your body can consume them. So I hope I did not take too much time. Uh, I tried really to be fast, to be quick. So um, if there are any questions, I am here. Okay, thank you very much, Nina. Very good, very, very good. Uh, yeah, it was a question in the chat, what is immortal, immortal? So I, I answered this step plant Latin name is Helichrysum Italico. Yes. Okay, very good. Keep you, keep your microphone open. Yes. Okay. Okay. So friends, questions for Nina. Yes. Who is speaking? Uh, uh, raise your hand, the yellow hand, if you want to put a question or make a comment uh, to the presentation of Nina. Okay, 
So uh, I liked a lot, uh, uh, Nina, uh, what you said that you need to do the timing. Timing is very, very important. Uh, and I am thinking here in case of COVID, uh, it's of course much better to act in time to prevent the disease than to wait, 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 and then we get complications. So we need to, to act very quickly to change our diet, our nutrition. And of course, we need to have a good diagnosis, like what are our weaknesses? If somebody has a problem with the heart, chronic problem, like a comorbidity, they should use a good nutrition for the heart, good plans for the heart. What do you think? <clears throat> Absolutely, and we cannot forget that herbs can be used in uh, several ways. We can use, um, we can digest flour, we can eat flour and get the pollen in origin version, or we can use the bee pollen. Uh, and we sometimes we use leaves or the whole plant. So um, uh, I would, um, I think it's, if we keep diversity in our nutrition, we do most of the job. Okay, uh, let me, uh, I'll, uh, uh, okay. Okay, now it is here in the, the, uh, the chat area, it's one question about, uh, they saw that image where you put uh, uh, the recipe like potatoes and some pollen, and they said, oh, but can you boil the pollen? So when you do put the pollen on the mixture, before heating, boiling, or at the end, before you eat it? Uh, I do all of that. It, it depends on the dish. Yeah, mostly when it comes to the soup, I add it in the end, like uh, instead of cheese, mm -hmm. let's say. Uh, in the salad, I put the raw pollen. Of course, I just, um, again, like salt and then pollen. Um, also in dessert, my little girl is nine years old now, and, but she constantly uses bee pollen and propolis in her desserts. She, she says she's going to be a, what is the word in English? She is going to make desserts sweet um um sweets, sweets. yeah okay. Okay. yeah and she's gonna ride a horse and bring it to everybody that wants with b products <laughs> okay, okay okay hello okay hello yes so uh yes hello? yes uh, uh wait a second the uh, back uh just yes. just one word when we, we can put the pollen in also in hot soup uh we will destroy the enzymes of course some vitamins but we can use the nutritional part like amino acids proteins and so on yeah. Okay, very good. Now, uh, okay, uh, let, let's give the word to Becky. Becky, can you ask? Uh, uh, good, good, uh, uh, good morning. Good morning. Can you? Can I'm, you open I'm, it? Uh, yes, I'm from Kosovo. I'm right now, I'm the driving, and I'm uh, heard you. This is uh, very good and nice uh, uh, workshop, but uh, I wanted to say something short about the, my experience about the COVID uh, treatment or uh, using so the apitoxin on the, uh, to prevent some heart or brain attack. Okay. Uh, can you open your camera? Mr. Yo, uh, uh, I'm okay. I'm driving, but uh, I cannot so much to, to to be concentrated on the camera, you know. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Understood. And, uh, my my uh, case is uh, in the June uh, last year. I was uh, very sick, and I feel uh, some um, headache and uh, pain and stomach, and, and so everything. It was very, very, very tired. And regarding these uh, symptoms, I have a. Uh, I have, uh, I after four or five days. I have a visit one appearance, one uh, beekeepers called me to visit and uh, regarding to the uh, American Fulbro disease and that case is I have not good prepared to, to cover, to be protected against the bees things and uh, the bees attack to me about 10 bees and uh, they sting to me and uh, after three days I become very good. Can you yes. hear me, please? Yes, yes, we can hear you, Mr. So, Patekula. I feel, I feel like to have, uh, in these five days, I feel like to have some problem with the heart and the, in the, in the, with the brain. But when I visit that appearance, 
and occasionally, not by intention, I didn't uh, go to take uh, the, the to, for beach. Okay. Uh, we do not hear you very well. Ten bees attack to me and stink, yes. stink yes. to me because yes. it's wonderful uh, treatment. Uh, the apitoxin against uh, radiation, also acute radiation with microwave and uh, viral disease and everything. I can say it is the most most uh, the, the treatment or better treatment. It is uh, apitoxin against uh, COVID-19 and against radiation. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Bakiahulaj. Thank okay. you. Uh, so uh, it, we didn't hear him very well because he was driving. Uh, the point was that he, he was uh, ill and then he went to an apiary and he got bee stings. So apitoxin is used a lot as a word in Latin America, but uh, we can, need more- It can more prevent against, against thrombosis also. Yes, it, yes. It prevent that uh, the uh, thrombosis. Yes, you are right, you are right. Now, okay, for, for B-venom, there are a lot of rules. You need to test for allergy. It's not so easy, but- uh, Thank we, you very much. Yes, yes. We can use also B-venom in form of uh, cream. There are several creams which can be used. And they are soft. They are not so dangerous like these things. But if we have a good allergy tests and we have a good anti anaphylactic shock kit with us, we are under medical protection uh, coordination. Then of course we can use bivenom. Bivenom is also antiviral. We know from AIDS, from many other situations, there is a big, big graphic with the melitine, which acts a lot against a lot of many, many uh, viruses. Mirella, what do you like to say about the combination with medicinal plants, nutrition, and so on? Yes, I want to congratulate Nina, not, for, not only for a good presentation, but because she makes a lifestyle from this. And this is uh, very important, not to just wait uh, to get sick and then to find the right treatment. Even if we have uh, the right treatments and very effective with bee products and herbs, but to strengthen our immunity and if possible, to not get ill, or if we get ill, to then uh, get uh, healthy very fast, and that we can do with the lifestyle. Because we talk up here mostly about remedies, but indeed, uh, if we talk about nutrition, I say to all my patients, what everything you put in your mouth will reach your cells. You feed them or you intoxicate them. So, uh, that's a choice that we have to make every day. And Nina has a nice garden. We lost you, Mirella. Uh, maybe your uh, connection is a bit low. Maybe you are on Wi-Fi. But you understood that you said that Nina has a wonderful garden. And we all agree. <laughs> Thank you, Stefan. Very, very <laughs> nice presentation. And also for Nina. Uh, sorry, I will activate my camera after because okay. now I am not at home. But I have published an article with medicinal plant in zinc impact okay. for COVID. It is very interesting also for, uh, for nutrition. I will share with you this article because okay. we have a very good, um, we, we made all uh, medicinal aromatic plant and we make analysis of selenium zinc. And we have this um, uh, co correlations between uh, medicinal plants as decoction, as tisan, and I will uh, send you the article after. Okay. Thank also, you for the, yes. Yes. Uh, also, Professor Badia yes. uh, can you put the, the article in the chat area here? Ah, uh, okay. But, uh, I, I make FSDMFS. FSDMFS. Uh, yes, yes. 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 And I will re rename you. Or as, uh, okay, I will, I will rename, yes, I, I, yes. I will make a... Okay. It's no problem, but, but just uh, just put the article, the PDF here in the chat area. Okay, 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 I will okay. Uh, put it, okay. Okay, okay. okay. thank you. Very, very good, thank you too. Thank you. Okay, any other comments on, uh, on this kind of first part of our um, conference from you? Uh, if not, we have... We are on the time, about the timing, yes. Okay, so um, uh, we have a, a coffee break now, not coffee break, sorry. It's honey break, honey tea break. We have for 30 minutes and uh, then we come back. For technical reasons, I will close the platform 
in order to allow the Zoom to record into the cloud all we all everything we discussed before. And at 11.30, our Romanian time, please come back to continue with the next presentations. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Shukran, shukran. Shukran. Shukran, merci. See you bye -bye. soon. Bye. See you. Danke, danke.